Hey, what's going on guys? It's Lucklin here and welcome back to Game Design 101. Okay, as you can see, we are in a pretty familiar setting. Now, for those of you that don't know what this is, uh, and for those of you that do know what this is, just go with me here. Um, I did a video on my channel called 1.8 The Dream. This is right prior to Enderman coming out, and everybody thought Endermen were going to be crazy and freaky and blah blah blah. Well, I did this video where I fell into the void, and when I fell into the void, this is what was beyond the void. It was the Enderman armies getting ready to invade Minecraft. Well, I did the whole entire end sequence of the video in the UDK. This is the UDK. For those of you that are not familiar with UDK, UDK stands for Unreal Development Kit. It's basically a indie version of their very, let's say, Epic Engine. No pun intended, but it's made by Epic Games. Uh, it's, it is a great, I, I really like it, it's a great tool. I mean, I've been using the Epic Engines from all the way from the beginning, from the Unreal, the first Unreal Engine. So this is really, they really came a long ways. So the UDK just really gives that power to everybody. Like, everybody can just go download this and, and use it and play with it. It's it's so awesome. It's such a great tool. So what I'm going to show you guys is just some of the stuff that I did inside of here. So let's go to wireframe so you can get an idea of everything. So you can see all the Endermen down there. Those are all the Endermen armies. And as we move this way, you'll see the portals with the particles. We're in the wireframe right now because it gets pretty crazy. So let's see. Let me turn this back on so you can see that. Let's turn lighting on. So there you go. There's the lighting with the shadows all baked in. So let's go this way. If we come this way, you can see that. Let me see if we can stop it. You can see that the lava is animated, so it's all real time animated. And what I basically did is when I fell into the void, I fell backwards, and the camera, the matinee camera, there's a, there's a thing in here called matinee that you can create all kinds of stuff with. And later on, depending on how far this series goes and how much you guys really want to see of all these different engines that I'm showing you. So here's the camera I set up here, and this is set up on a pathway that falls down like so, through here, all the way down like this, and then goes back through here, all the way back into where the Enderman is. Now, I'm not going to show you how to do that right now, but what I am going to show you guys how to do is how to, I guess, get familiarized with the UDK, show you some of the basics of the UDK, and depending on how much you guys like this depends on how far I'm going to go with it. And so, there we go. So this is what I wanted to show you guys. If you want to see this video, I will link it in the description. I'll also put an annotation so you can watch that video and you can actually see the end sequence of what's done inside of the UDK. So let's go ahead and let's start a new level. So we're just going to start a blank map. That's all we're going to do. So we're going to let this kind of circle and spin and wait. There we go. Done. That was easy. Okay, so this is the basics of the UDK. So let me go ahead and explain some stuff to you. There's so much to this engine that it's all not going to fit in one video. Obviously, we're going to do it in parts. But right now, I'm just going to kind of just take you through a basic interface. I'm not going to take you through things you don't need to know right now. Because, you know, I notice a lot of people do that, and there's no need to do that and confuse you. I'm just going to take you through the simple stuff on how to get started and building something right away. So, right now in front of us, this little red box right here. This is called a builder brush. That's what this little red box is. And this is a this is probably going to be your best friend inside of the UDK. One of your best friends. There's a lot of best friends in here. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to explain to you just some of the different things. So, for instance, remember in the in the Unity engine, if you pressed Q, W, E, R, you could like rotate, you could move, you could scale, and you could pan. Well, in the UDK, it's a lot different. All you got to do is hit spacebar. So, right now, we're in the move. There's rotate. And then there's scale. Automatically, you just pan. You can pan with your uh, with your mouse buttons. You can do it with either right or left mouse button. Pretty easy. So remember, spacebar, rotate, scale, move. Easy stuff. Really easy. Now let's say we want to look at views. Okay, so right here, you see the little P right there. Basically, this is your view view mm, viewport type. So right now it's perspective, that's what I call it, perspective, or you can have their camera, you can, whatever, how you want to say it. But right now it's perspective for me. So if I click this, T would stand for top. So the way you can pan inside of here is you can use your right and your left mouse buttons. And then you can zoom out with the mouse wheel. So let's find 
there it is. Let's find our builder brush. So right now we're looking at it from the top. This is a top view. So it's all going to look the same. So when we hit this, this is a front view. So we're looking at it from the front. And if you hit this, this is a side view. So it's from the side and back to perspective again. So here we are back at our builder brush. Pretty easy stuff. Now, once we start building with the builder brush, then I'll start going into these other settings up here so you can see these. These are just the way you can display your content in the viewport a lot easier and see it, you know, in, in different ways. So what we're going to do is, like I said, we have a builder brush here. So you have different brushes that you can make the builder brush with. So you can have a cone builder brush. You can have curved stairs. You can have a cylinder. You can have linear staircase. You can have a sheet. You can have a spiral staircase, you can have a sphere, uh, and you can change this, and I'll show you how you can change these. And then you can also have cards. Okay, and cards, just to give you an idea, cards would be used, I would use cards for, like, making torches. That's where the animated fire would go on a card. But for now, we're just going to go and we're going to start with a simple cube. That's it. So, right now, the cube has a setting on it, and let's go in here and you can see how to set it. So if you right-click the brush, right here, if you right-click this brush, and it brings up the brush builder cube. So right here we have an X, Y, and Z coordinates. So right now it's set for 1024, 1024, and 64. So it's 1024 wide, 1024 long, and it's 64 high, right there. Easy stuff. You can choose to hollow it or tessellate it, but we're not gonna do that right now, and I'll explain that later. So right now we're just gonna close it, and we have, that is our builder brush. So what we're going to do is go to the CSG operations. Okay, so now what the CSG operations are is basically you have add, subtract, intersect, and de-intersect. So we're going to be using these the most. These are the ones that you'll probably end up using the most. So for right now, we're going to hit add. Now watch what happens in the viewport. So now we have this kind of like surface that's just built from the builder brush. So now, like I said, the Builder Brush is going to be your best friend. So we're going to pull the Builder Brush up like so. We're going to right-click it again, and we're going to make it, mm, let's see, let's make it 128 by 128. And we'll leave it at, no, we'll probably make it 128 again. Let's make it 128 again. Okay, so there we go. It's 128 by 128 by 128. Now we're going to close it. Now this time we want to we want to make sure that that box is even with the top of our floor right here. So you're just going to go to your viewports. So right now you see how we're down in there. We just pull it up. Just pull it up like this. When the arrow turns yellow, you're basically on that on that axis. So now we're even with the floor. So we'll just go back to the perspective view like so. And all I have to do is hit add again. And now we have a cube like that. So now it's all becoming basically an object. So there we go, like that. So let's take our builder brush again. And we want to move our builder brush up. We're going to bring the height of the builder brush down. And you can do anything you want with this. Remember that. I'm, I'm just showing you guys things that you can do. So we're going to do 64. And we're going to say 256 by 256. Now at this point you can see that our builder brush is obviously above the cube. So let's go back here and just place it like so. And then back. And then we can hit add again. Okay, so now we have this like kind of table shape in the center here. Or a platform or however you want to do it. You can do a lot of things. You can do pillars like this. You can do all kinds of stuff. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to take the builder brush like so. And then I'm going to go to the top view because I want to line it up in the top view. So what I want to do is I want to grab the builder brush and I want to line it in top view. So we're going to pull it over here and we're going to line it like this right there. So what we're going to do is come over here and we're going to pull this down until it's even with our floor. Now we're going to right click on the builder brush again over here and we want to set the height. We're going to set the height to 256 just like so. So now that's our height of our builder brush. So we're going to hit close and at this point we want to do this and I'm going to show you how this is going to work. So we have our builder brush sticking through our floor. Now at this point we're going to use the CSG subtract and we hit the CSG subtract now watch what happens. Now we have a hole in our floor. So we're not going to use the builder brush for these next uh, three operations that we're about to do. So we're going to come like this and we're going to pull the builder brush off to the side. I'll leave it alone. So we're going to go into our top viewport and I'm going to show you why. 
and then we're going to go over here to these settings. So you have brush wireframe, you have wireframe, you have unlit, you have lit, you have detail lighting, you have lighting only, you have light complexity, texture density, and it keeps getting crazier and crazier. Shader complexity, uh, light map density, and so on and so forth. And we'll explain those later, but right now we're not going to worry about them. So we want to go to brush wireframe. Now, right now, brush wireframe. What this means is, if you look at you'll see two color boxes. You're going to see a blue box, and then you're going to see an orange box. The blue box stands for a additive basically an additive uh, subtraction or sorry an additive CSG CSG add sorry and then over here this box stands for a CSG subtract so what we're going to do is we know that that's what we want over here over here and over here so here's what we're going to do we're gonna grab this like so just like that Let's remember where it is. So we're one, two, three, four away from that corner. So that's what we want to make sure. We're four away from that corner. So we're going to grab this, going to hold down, and do this, hold down control, and we're going to pull it over. And we want to make sure we're four from that corner. So there's three, and there's four, just like so. So let's do this. Let's grab this, and we're going to pull this over. Now remember to clone, you're going to just hold down Alt, and then you're going to pull in the direction that you want it to go, and that will clone your box. So now we have two boxes. So I want to now I want to do I want to select both boxes together. The way to select both boxes together: select one box, hold down Control, then select the other box. So now we have two boxes selected. So we want to pull both of these boxes down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to just in this direction, we're going to hold down Alt, and we're going to pull the boxes down until we get four away. So that's what one two three four so there's four ways so now we have four csg subtraction boxes that are now made but let's go look in the perspective view so you can see what you see because once you unselect those so look, there we go there's our boxes right here so let's come this way and you can see that there's our subtraction boxes now at this point we don't have anything going on with this so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the unlit so if you look we only have one hole there okay so if you look at the one hole, but we have two subtraction boxes here that are selected. So anytime something's selected, you'll be able to see it in the viewport. But if we unselect it like this, you will not be able to see it in the viewport. But it doesn't mean it's not there. So what we're going to do at this point is we're going to use this little guy right here. And it's basically called Build Geometry for Visible Levels. That's all you need at this point is Build Geometry for Visible Levels. Don't worry about the errors that you're going to get because you've got to put other things inside of it to get rid of those errors later on. But right now we're not going to worry about that. So if we hit Build Geometry for Visible Levels, this is what happens. Now watch. Now look at what we have. So now our subtraction brushes just created three more holes just like the original. So that's all we had to do. So now if we go into our brush wireframe, you can see subtraction, 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 subtraction. And this is add, add, additive, additive, additive. So blue is additive, orange is subtraction. Remember that. Okay, so let's get out of this view and let's go to unlit. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to lit. So I'm going to go to lit like this so you can see that there's nothing there. You can just see a black mass right there. So what we're going to do is go back to lit. We're going to right click over here on the surface and we're going to say add actor and you're going to add a point light just like so. So we're going to pull that point light up like this. So at this point, there's our point light on this level. Now, we're not going to get the real lighting here because we haven't done lighting or anything like that yet, but you can at least get an idea of what the lighting is going to look like. So this is what it's going to look like. This is detailed lighting here. This takes away the textures and just kind of shows you what your lighting looks like on your level. So here's what we're going to do. So we're going to leave that. We might even pull that up some more so we get some light on top of that platform. About like that. Right there. Easy stuff. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come back and we're going to put on lit again. So you can see that there's an obvious surface here. So if I click this, it's going to click the top part of this whole entire surface. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to something called the content browser. This is the content browser for the UDK. So if you come over here, you can go into like the UDK uh, game and you can come up here click this and let's say we just want materials and we'll go into this later don't worry about how to make materials or anything I will show you this later remember if it gets popular I'm gonna show you guys a lot of different things so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this actually to the side some and we want to get to a certain material let me find okay so you see this material here we're gonna use the floor material we're just gonna grab it and we're gonna pull it over here and we're gonna drop it so if you look over here now we're gonna pull this to the side now we have a material applied 
to our surface. So it kind of looks like a brick floor. Okay, so here's what we want to do. Let's say we want to grab that surface like this, and we want to adjust the tiling on the texture. So all we need to do is this. So remember, the same thing goes with this. You see there's the movement. So if I grab this, watch what happens to the textures. They'll move. Oh, I grabbed the middle box. We weren't supposed to do that. We are supposed to grab these. See that? See how I'm moving the texture? That's how you can move the texture like that. Or if we hit spacebar, we can rotate the texture like so. Or if we hit spacebar again, we can scale the texture. And this is what this is where it comes in handy. So like we can make it real small or we can make it really big, just like that. So like if we deselect it, now you can see the texture itself, how good it looks on there. So if we move the light around, you can actually see the you can actually see the specular map moving inside of the light. And once again, like I said, I will explain that later. Right now, don't worry about it. We don't need to worry about it. So let's do this. Let's move the light around so you can at least see it move. So if you see the light, you see how the light moves on the brick itself? That's a specular map. That's a normal map. It's all kinds of little maps happening inside of there. And like I said, I'll show you guys that later. But right now, I just wanted to show you the basics of the UDK and what it can do. This is just the beginning. It can go so much further than this. Like, let me do something really fast just to give you an idea of something. So let's do, we're going to add an actor. We'll add a player start right here. So we'll back the player start up about like that. And let's just say that we want to play this in the level. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to go ahead and we're going to build the lighting. So the lighting is going to be built at this point. So we're going to build the, we're going to build all right now. And so what it's going to do is it's going to build the lighting and it's going to, uh, it's going to build in the pathing, which there is no pathing. So, and it's also going to build geometry. So that's what we're going to do at this point. So it's going to take a little bit to build this, but once it builds this and once it's done, and then we can go in and play it after that. So you're gonna you're gonna get you're gonna have to get used to like these type of uh, engines and stuff like that. They take a long time to process things. There we go. Don't worry about the warnings. The warnings don't mean anything right now. We'll fix those later. But right now we just built the lighting for this level. So now the light mapping has been built in. So what we're going to do is we are going to spawn into this level. So we could go here. We could play in viewport. So all we do is like this, and now look. Oh, we fell. Because, let's go back. Oh, see how it says the paths need to be rebuilt? Let me show you what that means too. There are no paths, and what it means by that is artificial intelligent paths. So, intelligence paths. So we don't want to do that. So let's pull this a little more forward like this. And let's pull this right there. And let's do this. Let's play this level. Okay, so now we are on top of the level. So we are actually inside of this level, moving around, that we just made from a game perspective. Pretty cool, huh? So like, yeah, you can, there's so many things that you can do with this engine. It's, it's, it's not funny. This engine is very, very powerful. So for those of you that want to see more on the UDK engine, like I said, this is just the beginning. There's so much more to show you. Uh, please, in the comments, feel free to you know, let me know how much you want to see this, and I will be happy to do more tutorials for you guys. So I will talk to you guys later. Bye.